Hi, this is Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Every once in a while I'm tempted to do a comparison between two watches that are thematically related in a way that I find intriguing, either because they're natural rivals, or because one represents an evolution of the other, or because they represent two different eras in the history of their respective manufacture. And maybe it's the third case that applies to this one most directly. Now, of course, Gerald Genta founded his eponymous watch brand in 1969, and he owned it until 1996, when he sold it to Hourglass Trading out of the Far East, a prominent dealer out there. And in 2000, Hourglass sold the Gerald Genta manufacturer of Lasantier, Switzerland, which was Siamese with Daniel Roth and had been for a number of years, to Bulgari, and the Italian jeweler began to slowly evaluate how it might integrate the Gerald Genta manufacturer into its own watch production. But it took a full 10 years for that to happen, and in the meantime, there was an era during which the Gerald Genta brand was building watches without much input from Gerald Genta himself. Essentially, the, the company had taken on its own identity and its own zany design ethic. Now, in 2010, the watch on the right debuted as the first sort of assimilated Bulgari watch to spring forth from the Gerald Genta manufacturer, and the watch on the left debuted in 2006 while the brand itself was still forging an independent path of its corporate parent. Here's the thing, this watch represents less about the design ethic espoused by Gerald Genta than this watch on the right, because the Octo was very much a Gerald Genta design when combined with the retrogrades and the jump hours that he personally championed during the 1980s and 90s you find that this is essentially Gerald Genta's case with Gerald Genta's own complications, and the only thing perhaps bulgary about it is the name on the dial. The watch on the left, despite being created in the era before bulgary began to assert its dominance and subsume the Gerald Genta name, actually represents more of the independent design work of the Gerald Genta brand. So this one, despite being labeled bulgary has more to do with Gerald Genta the man and his own design vision, whereas this one over here represents that crazy zany period when Gerald Genta was a manufacturer, perhaps a ship without a state is the best way to describe it, owned by Bulgari, but free of its original founding father and relatively free of the diktat of its corporate parent. Now it's good to compare them, because this watch, which came out in 2006, also had a companion model in white gold. It's rose gold and tantalum, just as the companion was white gold and tantalum. It features a number of patents that apply to the movement itself relating to bracing of the jump hour so it doesn't accidentally jump, uh, precision of the jump, the hour in sync with the retrograde hand, also the ability to set the minute hand backwards and forwards without damaging the mechanism. But it's interesting to note what Gerald Gent the brand was doing at the time. Combination of materials, one might even use the term materials fusion borrowed from another manufacturer out of Switzerland, but this one is entirely unique. It's not copying anything. It's a little bit crazy. It's like Breguet meets Gerald Genta meets Audemars Piguet meets a UFO. Quite frankly, the watch has a character that is unlike anything else, and all of these Arena by Retros were special watches. It's almost like they're overloaded with features and style. It's almost as though you could call this watch Baroque in character, and it starts with the case back. First, notice these unique proprietary rose gold screws. Even the screws are essentially unique to this watch, a one-off, the manufacturer's own design, and self-consciously designed. Also note the contrast between the satin case back, which is radial, and the polish of the screw heads. Thoughtful. Furthermore, note what's known as a potter or sometimes called old gold treatment of the movement. The base caliber is a Gerard Perigo 3300, here doing business as a Gerald Genta 1000. There's the use of guilloche on bridges, plates, and rotor, which is exceptionally uncommon, and then there's that gold plating, which gives it a downright exotic appearance. It's a high horology movement, but it seems almost alien in this finish. Now you look at the side of the case and there are a couple of features that strike you. First, the crown guards are fixed by screws and they feature a satin finish that contrasts with the coining of the case flanks. The mass of this watch is incredible in the hand and for that reason, screws are used to fix the strap to the case rather than spring bars. You'll also note a feature that Gerald Genta had pioneered since the mid-90s. There's a remarkable double-layered hobnail to the crown 
itself domed and polished, contrasting with the satin, circular finish of the tantalum bezel. Tantalum, a material seen infrequently in the watch industry, had a brief flourish of popularity during the 1980s, and then it was seldom seen until the 2000s. And this watch was one of several references in the mid-decades that helped to revive it. Now you can see the Rayhaut is highly stylized. Little touches set this apart. You can see the 60-second scale for the seconds outboard features the first 15 minutes individually numbered, and then a sweep of dots and dimples only. You'll note that the dial features both guilloche and gold at the bottom, and a circular sun-brushed satin finish beneath the applied and polished rose gold numerals that matches the bezel itself. The Rayhaut also has that circular satin finish that's incredibly striking and beautifully consonant with what's outside and inside the watch. Now you also note that the size of the numbers on the date I would say crescent, best term for it. The date crescent sees the numerals expand and shrink. If you're of the type who hates the shrunken numerals of the Patek Philippe, the latest Patek Philippe perpetual calendars, you're not going to like this. I love the alternation of the applied and printed numerals. And then you'll note the unique skeletonized and similarly styled retrograde hands. So they match each other. It's just a coincidence that they're pointing in the same direction at the moment but highly styled, they sit over a aperture with a frame of rose gold, in this case, and you can see that there's a sort of semi-opaque panel, and the idea is to make it possible to charge up the numerals because they do glow at night before they jump into the aperture. The sides are coined and rolled, and all of high polish. Let me see if I can corral my autofocus here. You'll also note that there's a dimple on the side, and the dimple is part and parcel to the movement itself. I'm going to take charge of my autofocus. Say you wanted to adjust the hour, let's say it's daylight savings and we want to jump ahead. This feature, which has been part of Gerald Genta jump hours since the 90s, allows you to jump ahead. So now the hour is advanced, but I haven't lost track of my minute. So I've corrected the watch and I don't have to estimate where the minute hand should land. It simply returns. This is a watch that is incredibly I would say expressive, flamboyant. It's a happy-go-lucky watch with a five-figure price tag and I would say, figuratively speaking, a million-dollar smile. You can see this watch and its white gold companion from a mile away. It looks like nothing else. It's a horological UFO and proud of it. Now this watch right here, this one has deeper roots in the world of Genta. The Octo case really dates back to the 1970s. It's when Gerald Genta started playing with this shape in various iterations. With great designers, you can honestly say that many of them had a golden age. I mean, for Raymond Lowy, it was the 30s, 40s, and 50s. For Giorgetto Giugero, it was the 60s and 70s with automobiles. I think it can rightly be said that Gerald Genta's golden age, his, his brilliant period, was the 1970s. And this watch speaks to that sensibility of design, the Royal Oak, the Nautilus, the IWC Ingenieur SL, and of course the Octo in the style of that period. It's aged well, but it's definitely of its age. Now here's the funny thing, just because this one says Bulgari on the dial doesn't mean it's less representative of Gerald Genta's design vision. As I stated earlier, the other watch was created during a period when Genta was effectively dissociated from the brand. This watch keeping Genta's preferred complications and his own case design, somehow winds up with more direct Gerald Genta DNA. Of course, the script of the Genta inherited models, the legacy models, disappeared in time and they became strictly Bulgaris. This one debuted in 2010, the other in 2006, just to repeat. It features a ceramic bezel that represents a little bit of a materials upgrade to the traditional Gerald Genta design, as well as a strap that contrasts rather dramatically with the immense alligator leather of the other timepiece. Vulcanized rubber, this one features facets and a flow that's staggered almost in the fashion of some sort of armadillo, almost in the fashion of some sort of crustacean. It's not quite the Omega lobster bracelets of the 70s, but perhaps a little bit of a nod to Art Deco imagery. You can see the watch also features a massive clasp, just so we can compare clasps apples to apples, like everything else on that Arena by Retro. The double deployant trigger clasp of this watch is just a bordello for your wrist. 
excess for its own sake, but it still cracks a smile. It doesn't take itself completely seriously. I would say the Bulgari class, like the rest of the Bulgari Octo Jump Hour, is a fairly serious piece. Combination of polished and matte finish. There's really no wry smile here. It's all high horology as you would expect it to be presented. But what hasn't really changed is the design ethic of the movements. Now it still has a GG reference number, in this case it's a GG722. And you'll note some of the design flourishes that distinguished the brand remain intact right down to the Gerald Genta signage beneath the strap. Remember, the DNA runs deep here. This one is a Bulgari in name only. It's a B-I-N-O. Now the movement in this case is a little bit less complex than the one in the Arena by Retro. The Octo by Retro features 26 joules versus 27 in the other, but it's the same Gerard Perigo 3300 bass, and it's the same 4 hertz beat rate, it's the same unidirectional winding, it's the same hacking mechanism, which is curious because this watch hacks, though it doesn't have a seconds hand. And it features a 46 hour power reserve when fully energized. Now, both of the watches feature, which I appreciate immensely, is 100 meter water resistance, so in their way, these are both sports watches in the truest sense. This one perhaps better suited to immediate submergence due to the rubber strap, but this one on any kind of textile or rubber strap would be just as suited. The big difference between them is that the Octo by Retro goes about its business with a push-down crown rather than a threaded screw-down crown, and the Arena by Retro, perhaps cautious to a fault, perhaps a little bit over-engineered, makes do with a more secure, although nominally, equally 100 meter rated screw down crown. So they go about their business differently but they achieve the same water resistance. Now you also note a subtle difference between the two other than everything about the way they look is the center seconds on the Arena by Retro. Do I miss it? No. I feel that this watch has a little bit more sobriety about it and the relative stasis of the dial before the, the moment of, of release of explosive retrograde action of dynamism. It's, it's the peace, it's the, the zen, it's what comes between the retrograde flicks and the jump of the hour that defines this watch, whereas this watch is all about action. It's about everything all the time, to quote the Eagles, and so its character is better served by the constant nervous tick of that second's hand. These are interesting watches. Dripping with irony, somehow the Bulgari version winds up being closer to the vision of Gerald Gent the man, while the watch that features his name writ large probably has more to do with the imagination of the designers and watchmakers who worked for his namesake brand. These are two interesting watches from two very close coupled eras. Separated by only five model years, they're miles apart in character. You can see and you can purchase both of them on our website.